If you're a chocoholic, you're going to love this episode of Martha Bakes. We have a chocolate baked Alaska. It doesn't look so chocolatey, but inside, chocolate ice cream, chocolate cake. And we have warm chocolate cakes. These melt in the center chocolate cakes that only take seven minutes to bake. And the piece de resistance, chocolate caramel cream pie. This is a to die for pie, just delightful. Today on Martha Bakes. Baked Alaska is essentially cake topped with ice cream and blanketed in meringue. These miniature versions take this iconic American dessert to new heights. Three layers of rich chocolate cake, which is very easy to make, and chocolate ice cream. So for the cake part, we need one and a third cups of all-purpose flour, one and a third cups of granulated sugar. Put that right into, and one cup of Dutch processed cocoa. This is a very rich, unsweetened cocoa powder. One teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, and two teaspoons of baking soda. Now, sift all this together. I just wanna show all of you why you sift. <laughs> it does make little lumps, but those lumps are easily dispersed through the strainer. So here we have our dry ingredients. Now we have six egg yolks. We're gonna beat those with one cup of safflower oil. Safflower is a tasteless, clear oil, vegetable oil, that works very, very well in cakes that call for oil. Two teaspoons of vanilla. And two thirds of a cup of warm water an odd combination of ingredients for sheet cakes. And this will get very, very moist chocolate cake. So now just add your chocolatey ingredients, the dry ingredients. You can see how nice and shiny the batter is. And now it's time to beat the egg whites, which are folded into this chocolate. Using the same mixer, we have six egg whites, a wire whisk, and we're also going to add two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar. I'm adding the sugar little by little into the egg whites to get them to soft peaks that are glossy and smooth. Our baking trays have been sprayed with a vegetable spray and lined with a sheet of parchment paper. Spray under the paper and on the paper. I think that's good. Yes, glossy peaks. Now these get folded right into the chocolate mixture. Lighten the chocolate a little bit if you can with a dollop of the egg whites. If you've been wondering about baked Alaska and wondering how it got its name, it was made to commemorate the United States purchase of Alaska in 1867. So here we have beautiful chocolate cake mixture. Now we want half in this tray and half in the other tray and spread it all out. This does rise, so you will have a thin sheet cake from which we will cut our discs that will be the basis for our baked Alaskas. Chocolatey chocolate baked Alaskas. Now spread this, I'm using a big offset spatula to level the batter in the pan. Now your oven should be preheated to 350 degrees. Bake the cakes 18 to 20 minutes. Not too long. After the cake is completely cooled, run a knife around the perimeter and try to lift up a piece of the parchment. It looks like it's going to release. And then just turn this over very quickly onto a piece of parchment paper. You have to be bold when you do things like this. And there, came out perfectly. Remove the parchment 
And now we're gonna cut these into rounds. We are using a two and a half inch round biscuit cutter, a three and a half inch round, and a four inch round. We need six of each size for this particular dessert. So altogether, you could probably get out of the two layers, 12 of these wonderful chocolate baked Alaskas. Now spray a small glass bowl with vegetable spray and line with plastic wrap. And then spray the plastic wrap. And you start with the smallest rounds. These go in the bottom of the bowl. It doesn't matter which side is up or down because everything's gonna be covered with meringue the snow of Alaska. And now a scoop of ice cream on top of the small disc. So now the three and a half inch squares. This dough is like a very moist, almost brownie dough. And now a big scoop of ice cream on top of this layer. Approximately four cups of ice cream for six of these baked Alaskas. And now the top layer. And just press down. Don't be afraid. And you see how nicely they fit into these bowls? Absolutely perfectly. And then cover with your plastic wrap so that the cakes are well sealed and get this right back into the freezer until the cakes and the ice cream are rock hard. So now for the meringue, 12 egg whites, three cups of granulated sugar, stir it in well. We're gonna make a Swiss meringue. And I always add in my meringue a little cream of tartar. A pinch, sort of like that. That helps keep the meringues dry. And a pinch of salt I'm gonna put into my meringues also. This is a Swiss meringue, which is egg whites and sugar, cream of tartar, heated over a bain-marie, and then whipped to a smooth, glossy, frothy texture. And just keep stirring until the egg whites are warm, almost too warm to stick your finger into. Put this right on our stand mixer. Turn this on high and beat until it's exactly the consistency you want for a piping over our beautiful chocolate Alaskas. So now the meringue is done. It took about 12 minutes. Here's our chocolate Alaskas. I can't wait to unwrap one for you. Gently release from the bowl. And here you have your little chocolate cake. Now you can just spoon and swoop. Now look at that, it is like snow. It's like Alaska snow. Then cover all the chocolate. Oh, so beautiful and so easy. So just proceed and do all of them like this. And right before serving, take one of these little torches and brown the meringue. And that, my dear friends, is a baked Alaska. Really cute. Enjoy. Five ingredients are all it takes to make what might be the most luxurious of chocolate cakes. They're known for their rich, hot, runny fudge centers. And legend has it that these chocolate cakes were invented by a busy chef who mistakenly undercooked his recipe. First, chop up four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. Get the pieces of chocolate as small as you can with the knife because we're gonna melt the chocolate with the butter. Four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate melted with one half a cup, one stick of unsalted butter. And we're creating a double boiler effect here over simmering water with the chocolate and the butter. As the butter melts, the chocolate will also melt. And now the molds, these are four ounce size porcelain ramekins. The chocolate cakes uh, really cook very well in these. Use room temperature softened butter and a brush to generously butter the ramekins. 
You can make larger cakes if you want. This recipe makes just four, and uh, you can double the recipe if you like, and then make it again if you're going to make more than eight. Okay, so take a teaspoon of flour and run it all the way around the ramekin, like that. I would dump that flour into the next ramekin. And you don't want any flour left in there, so really bang it out. And run this one around. Good to do it over a sink or over a tray. And then you can bang this one into the next. Makes a lot of noise, but nobody's listening. And I keep these on a baking sheet like this. It makes it easier to handle four molds at one time. There, our molds are ready. And look, melting very nicely. Now, very few ingredients, as I said. So we need two eggs and two egg yolks in the bowl of our mixer. So here we have our eggs. Fit the wire whisk on your mixer. And beat the eggs and egg yolks with a quarter of a cup of granulated sugar. And I said that these were molten chocolate cakes. Well, guess how much flour these cakes have in them? Two teaspoons. All-purpose flour. That's it. So beat this until it is light and fluffy. So now pour your chocolate right into that mixture. I think I can take this off now. And so now, just pour even amounts into your ramekins. And what makes these a fantastic dessert for entertaining is that you can make them up to this point and just keep them in the refrigerator until you are ready to bake them. So if you have 20 people coming for dinner tonight, you can make these in the morning stick them in the fridge, and then put them in the 450 degree oven right before you want to serve them. And if you've dribbled a little tiny bit, I suggest you wipe your dish just because you want it to look real pretty when you take it out of the oven. Okay, so now we're gonna cook these right now in a 450 degree preheated oven, seven to eight minutes. So while the cakes are in the oven, I thought I would show you one really pretty garnish idea. Instead of using a candied flour, why don't you sugar some fresh green mint leaves? It'll taste very good with the little chocolate cakes. So an egg white with a little tiny bit of water added, just to thin it out a little bit. Yeah, that's good. And then hold your mint leaf and make sure that it's a pristine leaf. You can buy mint leaves all year round and just brush with the egg white and water. And sprinkle both sides with a little bit of super fine sugar. And just put on a rack to dry. Very pretty. A simple way to garnish a pretty cake. You can do that with pansies roses, rose petals, a variety of edible plants. Make sure the plants have never been sprayed. Okay, so now, seven and a half minutes. These should be perfectly molten. Look how cute they look, like little mini souffles. We have our mint leaves. Now to lift these, they're very, very hot. We have tongs wrapped with wet paper towels held on with rubber bands. I find that these work very well as lifters, just like that. You want to invert these on a glass plate and just let them sit there for a minute or so. Same thing here. And now the cakes should slide out. Garnish with a little mint leaf or two, so pretty, and a dollop of whipped cream on the side. And when you cut into your dessert, look what pours out. 
beautiful molten chocolate. Delectable, delicious, a mouth-wateringly simple dessert. Enjoy. You are going to have the best treat. This is a delicious recipe, and it is a chocolate caramel cream pie with a silken chocolate pudding filling and caramel whipped cream. It's a truly decadent dessert. You need a pot brise crust, and I'm just rolling out one half of our perfect pie crust pot brise recipe. You can see all the bits of butter in here. It makes a very delicious tender crust. Okay, so that looks good. So now to get this into the dish, if you're worried about it tearing or ripping, you could try to lift it up and flop it in, but this is a pretty easy way to lift up a big piece of pastry. Just roll it on your rolling pin like this and place your crust right over the dish. You need to tuck under the excess crust, completely covering the glass rim of the dish. There's not that much overhang, so I don't even have to trim on this crust. Just roll it under. And we're going to make an edge that we call bear's teeth. Make an even number of cuts, about a half inch apart, all the way around the crust, just like that. And then what you do is fold in one and leave one down. Fold in one and leave one down. That gives the most charming crust. Go all the way around. If it gets too soft, put it in the refrigerator to chill and continue. I have one that's already done, so I'll just put this in to chill. So here's one that's already finished all the way around. Very neat looking and docked with a fork. Docking prevents the bottom crust from bubbling up or erupting when it's baking. This keeps the crust nice and flat in the bottom of the dish. Now this has to be blind baked, which means baked before it is filled. And to blind bake, take a piece of parchment paper. It can be white like this or unbleached, and I just wrinkle this all up. It makes it easier to fill with the weights. It makes the paper less stiff. And now fit this into your crust and fill with pie weights. You can buy aluminum weights. You can use beans. You can use rice. I find these beans, which are probably 20 years old, very effective weights. Now put this right into a preheated 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Then we remove the beans and bake until it's a nice light golden brown. So now we're going to show you how to make the filling for the chocolate caramel cream pie. And the chocolate custard that goes in the crust first is made out of four ounces of bittersweet chocolate melted in two and a half cups of whole milk and let that melt over a low flame. You can whisk it. And the dry ingredients that thicken the custard, a quarter of a cup of cornstarch three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and a half a cup of granulated sugar. Whisk this all together. Now, this is a pudding. A pudding generally has a thickener uh, in it, like cornstarch. And a custard is thickened with eggs. Good. We don't want any lumps. Now, this goes right into the milk and the chocolate. You just put the whole thing in. This will cook until it is nice and thick. We need four egg yolks. Now these are going to add more flavor and an additional thickness to our pudding. Now to temper, add a little bit of this very hot chocolate pudding into the egg yolks. You're bringing the temperature of the egg yolks up to the same temperature as the chocolate. And then you can put this back into the pot. And so now just add your egg yolk mixture to the chocolate. Stir this, cook for one to two minutes. It smells so good. 
It is a delicious chocolate pudding. And here is our bear's tooth edged pie crust. It is a beautiful color on the back as well as on the front. It's tender, but it still holds its shape if you lift it very delicately. Now pour your chocolate pudding right into the crust. This should fill the nine inch crust exactly. And in order that a crust doesn't form on the pudding, just place plastic wrap right on the surface. Now this can be put into the refrigerator to chill. Now you can make the caramel for the whipped cream topping. Half a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of water. And I don't stir this, I just swirl. This is gonna be the caramel. So turn this on a pretty high flame. I sometimes just cover it and let the steam rise up the sides of the pan onto the cover and it drops back down, preventing any crystallization. Another way to stop the crystallization that might occur is to take a brush with water and just run it around the rim right above the sugar water. So now reduce the heat and add your cream. Keep cooking. If you just left it with no cream, it would turn into a hard crack candy. With the cream, it becomes like a sauce. So beautiful. So that's a nice color. And now because it's so liquidy, just immerse the whole bottom of the pot. <laughs> now listen to this. It makes a sizzling noise. And this will help thicken the caramel. So here is our caramel sauce. Very, very nice. Now with this, we are going to flavor whipped cream. The whipped cream is going to top the chocolate pudding. And it's one and a half cups of heavy cream whipped to soft peaks. Make sure the caramel is cold before you do this. So delicious. And just whip this some more until it gets nice and thick. You could use an electric hand beater if you don't want to test your muscular strength with a whisk. <laughs> but this is good exercise. So look, everyone, it does get nice and thick. So here's our pie shell. And now dollops of the caramel cream on top of the chocolate. We want this nice and high and beautifully sculpted to your taste. Now, to finish this off, we made the same amount of half a cup of sugar with two tablespoons of water and poured the caramel on a nonstick pad. This makes a really pretty glassy-like caramel. And you can just break this up with a serrated knife into almost like broken stained glass. Very brittle. Break it into really kind of small pieces. Amber. So now sprinkle this amber all over the top. And this is certainly gilding the lily. And really pretty. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time on Martha Bakes. How beautiful. So chocolatey, this will win the hearts of all your chocolate lovers. If you're like me and can never get enough chocolate, look no further because today is all about chocolate. We have a wonderful recipe for a milk chocolate pistachio tart. Incredible. And our famous Roberta Hart, which is a flourless chocolate mousse cake 
you're going to love it. And all these beautiful chocolate embellishments. Thank you very much, Jacques Torres, who shows us six incredibly simple, but very professional techniques. And chocolate hazelnut biscotti, perfect for your morning cappuccino or your afternoon tea. Today on Martha Bakes. Well, if you love pistachios, you're gonna love this recipe for a milk chocolate pistachio tart. And the best part might be the pistachio green racing stripe that appears when you slice into the tart. We have to make a nice dark chocolate crust that is enriched with chopped pistachios. It's three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour with a quarter of a cup of Dutch processed cocoa which is a cocoa powder that's treated with an alkali such as potassium carbonate to neutralize the natural acidity of cocoa. To the cocoa and flour, add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a third of a cup of chopped pistachios. To me, one of the best nuts ever. I visited Morocco where they harvest lots and lots of pistachios and in the marketplaces, pistachios as large, almost as walnuts. California grows very nice pistachios also. Now for the rest of the crust, beat at room temperature one stick of butter, one half cup, and mix that with a quarter of a cup of granulated sugar. This is like a rich cookie dough crust. That's easy to make, very delicious, and easy to fit right into a tart shell. Half a teaspoon of good vanilla. It's always good vanilla. And add your dry ingredients. That's pretty much it. You can buy shelled pistachios that have no salt at good nut stores or online. You can find pistachios in large quantities. I keep lots of pistachios in my house. So scrape the bowl clean and we uh, form this into a little disc and chill well. That's the crust. You don't have to use your hands to form this into a disc. Use the plastic because this is a really dark chocolate. It'll get all over your hands. So just use the plastic like this to gather the crust into a flat disc and chill. And I have one that's already chilled. I find that because this is kind of sticky, uh, it's great to just roll it on floured plastic, top and bottom, and a little bit more flour and a, another piece of plastic right over and roll it large enough to fit in your nine inch tart shell. So you see, this is rolling very nicely and it would be more difficult if you didn't have the plastic. And for a hard dough like this, hard and dense, using a rolling pin with the ball bearing handles, very, very effective. And you don't have to be so strong. The old baton ones, you have to use a lot more upper body strength. Work quickly because you don't want your dough to get warm. If it starts to feel warm, put it right back in the refrigerator and chill it a little bit. So put the little disc right here. It'll help you lift the pastry and then just slide it down into your tart pan. Little techniques that help a lot. But you see, it's already soft from rigid to soft in just a matter of seconds. So put a little flour on your hands and fold the crust in on itself just to reinforce the sides of the tart. Put this back in the freezer for 30 minutes until it's really stiff and then bake it off at 325 degrees, about 30 minutes. Look how nicely this bakes and make sure you cool the crust completely before you fill it. Now for the filling for this beautiful crust. To five ounces of milk chocolate, Add a half a cup of cream and a quarter of a cup of milk that's heated. So just let that sit for a minute or so, and you can grind the nuts. We're using a half a cup of Sicilian pistachios. They're such a beautiful, bright green. Add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of safflower oil. 
flavorless oil. And grind that into a, almost a paste. And to the ground nuts, now add a quarter of a cup of sugar. Pistachios are rich in vitamin A, calcium, thiamine, phosphorus, and iron. So this beautiful, bright green, sugary mixture, scrape it out right into your tart shell and spread this all in one layer. Now it's very important to press this down firmly and you can use the back of a cup like this. Be careful with the handle that you don't crush your lovely crust. So that's pressed in. Now, how is the chocolate doing? I think it's melted. Now add one large egg, slightly beaten with two year milk chocolate. Mix that together and your oven should be preheated to 300 degrees. And just pour that right on top of your pistachio base and bake this for 30 to 35 minutes. The moment of truth, getting the delicate cookie crust out of the ring. And look, a few little crumbs. What a pretty tart. This is cooled. And then to embellish the tart, I think it's really nice to uh, take those same Sicilian pistachios and put a row of them around the edge of the crust. You could put that in the window of any bakery. And can you see that beautiful little green stripe underneath the chocolate? It tastes even better than it looks. The dark, rich flavors of a semi-sweet and unsweetened chocolate, rum and espresso, mingle wonderfully in this moist, flourless chocolate cake. I like to call it the Roberta Heart. It's named for my old friend, Roberta Kins, who once made 38 of these in one day for one of my catering jobs. After you see how easy it is to make, you'll understand how she could make so many. First thing to do is to melt the chocolate. And we use one and a half tablespoons of espresso powder in six tablespoons of hot water. Stir that well and add that to 21 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, which had been broken up, and three ounces of unsweetened chocolate, just to add a little bit more depth of flavor. Put this over simmering water, so you've simulated a bain-marie, and stir it every so often until it melts smooth and glossy. Six tablespoons of dark rum added to your chocolate. Semi-sweet chocolate contains 60% chocolate liquor and 40% sugar. So let that sit there and melt just by itself. And now into nine large eggs, add three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar and whisk all together. And then you're gonna heat this also over simmering water until all the sugar is dissolved. And you're going to beat it until it's light and frothy. So just put your bowl right over simmering water. So we have the eggs warming. We have our chocolates melting. Now this is heavy cream, one and a half cups with a tablespoon of sugar and about a tablespoon of vanilla. This is whipped to a nice stiffness and this is going to be folded into the whole thing before we bake the Roberta Hart. I think the sugar is completely dissolved, and now we can whip this on our stand mixer until it's light and frothy. This has to be for approximately five minutes. So look what's happened to our eggs. It has tripled in volume. And I'm gonna add chocolate. So this is like a cake when it's finally finished without any flour. This was one of our most popular and most asked for desserts when I ran my catering business, which was called the uncatered affair. The idea being that a hostess never had to say who had done all the cooking. And now fold in your whipped cream. Okay, so I can now pour this into our prepared pan. This is a 10 by two inch heart 
buttered and then lined with parchment paper. And then everything is buttered again. Make sure you've preheated your oven to 350 degrees. Now carefully place this in your roasting pan at least two inches deep. This is going to be a water bath. Put boiling water so it comes about an inch up the pan and then pop it into the oven for approximately one hour until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. When it comes out of the oven, let it cool in the water bath. When it is cool, refrigerate overnight. To release it from the pan, just put it back in a little bit of warm water and have your serving pedestal ready and some nicely whipped sweetened cream. If it's not releasing, you might loosen around the edges with a sharp knife, just the point, and then try it again. Keeping your cool in the kitchen is extremely important. So now invert your platter over the heart. <gasps> How beautiful. And now we move the parchment from around the perimeter of your heart. You see how moist and chocolatey and gorgeous this is? Just brush away any crumbs. I'm going to pipe a beautiful ruffled edge all the way around with whipped cream, and this covers any unevenness. And then you can embellish the top and go in the opposite direction. So here you have a Roberta heart. So chocolatey, this will win the hearts of all your chocolate lovers. Enjoy. I am so excited because today we have Master Chocolatier Jacques Torres to show us five easy techniques guaranteed to give your desserts a professional look. And I think I'm going to learn a lot today, Jacques. What's the first thing that you're going to teach us? The first thing that they're going to do is a lot of time when we make a cake, we never know exactly how to finish it. Glazing a cake is not always very easy, but with this recipe, anyone can do it. Oh, good. So we have to mix water, cream, sugar, then cocoa powder. Now, so just we also have one package of gelatin and one tablespoon of water. So it can pour that into this mixture oh, okay. that's already boiled for about 20 minutes. Oh, so, so when the gelatin melts, we can put it on a water bath okay. with ice. And I usually stop it around 80 degrees. So here I have some cold glaze ready to go. Ready. So we just put the glaze on top of the cake. So what I like to do is put that over a bowl. So nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes, goes to waste. That's it. It's like over. magic. So now so you all the to... excess drips into your bowl and you just use it again for the Correct. next cake. Wow. And that's all you have to do. So Jacques, what are we doing now? We call it chocolate leather. Chocolate leather. So what I did here, I melt some chocolates. And over these are icy cold. Those are very cold. They stay overnight into the freezer. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of that chocolates over the marble and with an offset spatula, spread it very thinly. Then right away, I'm going to use a knife and cut about the height of the cake. And then the chocolate going to unstick from the marble. That's why we call it chocolate leather. Look a little bit like leather. And then we can put that around the cake. If it doesn't go completely around, we're going to do a little other piece to finish that side. Wave the top a little bit like that. That is really fun, chocolate leather. And then we're going to do other decoration to decorate the rest of the cake. Oh, we're making chocolate string. Exactly. It's a number 800 tip, a little round tip, a large 18 inch pastry bag. This is just melted chocolate again? That's, this is just melted chocolate. So you untempered. twist the bag like that, and this is a little secret for keeping it from dripping out the hole while you fill the bag, right? Exactly. Okay. So you can put that on a container. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill the bag. Just, you don't put too much chocolate, just a tiny bit. Okay. okay that's enough. Okay. Then we have a lot of vodka. This is the fun part here. Oh, vodka. Vodka. Okay. And why alcohol is because you can put it in a freezer. It's going to get very cold, but it's not going to freeze. Then we take the chocolates and we're going to, to drizzle like that on top of the vodka. And when you think you have enough chocolate, you stop. Oh, how fantastic. Then you can take that with a couple skewers and put that on the tray and let's it cool down a it's little so bit. so pretty. Oh, look. look so of this. course, when it's dry, you can oh. take that and arrange it on top of a cake. Oh my gosh, I love this shock. 
So Jacques, this is technique number four. Number four. We have white Cap. chocolates, just melted. Yes. A little half size uh, sheet pan. This is ice. Oh, this is ice. ice. Okay. So what we're going to do, some strip like that. We're making hay. We're making hay, so. While the sun shines. Do you know that little saying? Meat? No. No, oh, make hay while the sun shines. Okay. Not in the rain. That's not the French one. <laughs> no, it's American. <laughs> so I'm going to cut, you know, you can cut the side here. Okay, then you put all the hay together and then roll it. Then we can, when we have it, take it oh, and pretty. put it on top of a cake. Looks pretty on the chocolate. Look good on the cake oh, here, you're yeah. right. And then some eggs. We have some little oh. eggs here to decorate it. Look, they look like my Araucana eggs. Maybe what a more. great idea. You know, those techniques are very simple. They are fun, and that's definitely oh. something that we can do at home. What a great technique. Make hay out of white chocolate. And now we have one more technique, numero cinq. Numero cinq. We melt the chocolates to two thirds. Okay, now what kind of chocolate is this? This is a chocolate with a lot of cocoa butter. Okay. So European chocolates okay. usually have a lot of cocoa two butter. Two pounds of dark chocolate. Chocolates. Okay. So melt in the microwave. I'm going to show you to which level. How many minutes? The minutes depend on the, how strong is your microwave. So you go 20 seconds by 20 seconds. Okay. That, this way you're not going to get in trouble. So it's not completely it's melted. It's not completely melted. So what I do, I put that now into a cold bowl. And this is the whole secret. So you're reducing the temperature. Yes. So now I always have three tools when I work with chocolates. One is an immersion blender. So the immersion blender is going to break down all the pieces. Then, with the laser thermometer, I'm going to look at the temperature. Oh, oh, so okay. look at this, this and you tell, me what's going, yeah. you tell me what's going on. 88. Okay, so we are a little bit cold. The only thing that we have to do now is bring it back to 90 degrees. Okay. Okay, so no, I use a hair dryer. Is that because your hair dryer or mine? This is yours. Mine was red. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, you just heat a little bit the top. The whole temperature is going to come up. We're going to stabilize oh, the no. chocolate at 90 degrees. It's a little bit harder now, but... Yeah, look. now it says 90. That's 90. it. There. So the chocolate is tempered. What we're going to do, we're going to play with balloon. I like to use balloon with no color. So I'm sure that the color doesn't going to transfer to the chocolates. Then what we do, we dip it three times to create three petals and put it on a tray. Hmm, so cute. Beautiful. So what we have to do now, put that in the fridge for three to six minutes. So now that's the fun part, we have to pop them. You ready with that? We pop three each. One, two, three, go! <laughs> I'm much more ladylike. <laughs> so, we and look how cute the little bowls. And those are beautiful. Oh, they are. Ah. Now you have to surprise your guests with something like this next time you entertain. So before we oh, fill so them, I would beautiful. love to show you that you can make actually a bigger balloon and put that on the center of the table. Oh yeah. And you can do a little flower like that oh, by adding pretty. by putting different size balloon yes. inside each other. Okay, okay, so now we have chocolate mousse in front of us. Yes, so okay. we take some warm water and we can make some simple quenelle. Quenelle okay. is... Spoon. Oh, it's a shape, right? A quenelle. Yes, a quenelle is a shape. Okay, so we have little quenelle and then we have whipped cream. And we can put a dollop of cream on top of fruit. If you like, a little bit of peach will be delicious with that. Oh, wow. It's really nice. And so again, I really think that those techniques are really easy. Anyone can do some beautiful dessert at home. You can, and we will. Thank you very much for coming it's here. It's my pleasure, always. Uh, and sharing fun and easy chocolate embellishments. Thank you, Jacques. Merci. Merci, Martin. Biscotti, which means twice baked in Italian, are crunchy cookies baked in a loaf, sliced and baked again. My favorite recipe for them is chock full of hazelnuts with a double dose of chocolate, perfect for dunking in your favorite coffee. And they're not really hard to make once you master the technique. Two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour and a quarter of a cup. Dutch processed chocolate. One teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of baking soda. One cup of semi-sweet chocolate cut into chunks. And try to make them kind of small because uh, then you won't have to process everything so much. And one and a half cups blanched hazelnuts. And now just pulse and chop until the largest piece is like a small pea. There. Lovely. 
This is going to go into the batter. Now, in a stand mixer, four large eggs, beaten until it's light and forms a ribbon. One and a half cups of sugar. Add the sugar in a steady stream. Let's check to see if this falls nicely into a ribbon. And notice the color, it's really changed color. It gets kind of a creamy, pale yellow, lovely. So now add one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chunks and the dry ingredients. This is a kind of a wet dough. It's chunky, has good texture but it will absorb more of the liquid into the flour. There. So now on a generously floured surface, put your dough. We have to form four loaves that are two inches by about 10 inches long. Your bench scraper's a very good tool for this. In a bakery, they would certainly use a scale to make sure that each loaf is the same, but you can be a little inaccurate. So cut this in half, and half, and half. So you want a loaf about 10 by two. And you don't want a whole lot of excess flour. I'll brush it off with a brush when I'm finished here, but it's already darkening, absorbing into the dough. Now just brush off the excess. With a little bit of egg white, brush the surface. These will flatten as they cook. And after they cook the first time, you cool them, and then you slice them and cook them again. That's that biscotti. So here, sprinkle with sanding sugar. This is a very granular, sparkly sugar that brightens up the surface of any baked good. And it looks so pretty. There. So 350 degrees, rotating halfway through until the logs are just firm to the touch, about 20 to 24 minutes. So the biscotti have cooked for about 24 minutes, cooled for another 20 minutes, and these are the loaves. They tend to stick a little bit to the parchment, but that's okay. And some of the sanding sugar is loose, that's okay. Now slice these flat loaves into strips, about uh, approximately a half an inch or three eighths of an inch. And then this is what's going to be baked again on a rack. Look how gorgeous these look. Now you bake this again for about 20 minutes longer until the biscotti is completely dry through and through. So this is the biscotti after it has been baked the second time. Biscotti can be kept in an airtight container for up to a week. When it comes out of the oven after that second baking, just cool them on a rack. The combination of chocolate and hazelnut just can't be beat. I hope you'll try these recipes out on your favorite chocoholic. See you next time on Martha Bakes, and thanks for watching. And the cake can be chilled, or if you can't wait, you can serve it right now. Chocolate and caramel, a match made in heaven. You might consider caramel a one ingredient wonder, sugar. Okay, two if you're counting the water. Many recipes suggest cooking it until the color reaches a specific shade. As you can see here, I have a chart made out of actual caramel, ranging from pale to light to amber to medium to dark to burnt. These are beautiful shades, and today I'll demystify making caramel in four of my favorite recipes. A salted caramel six-layer chocolate cake, second to none. And alfajores, these wonderful layered cookies using a dulce de leche. And a buttery pound cake, this gorgeous cake, with a caramel glaze. And chocolate caramel cookie bars, the best caramel you've ever tasted. Today, all of this on Martha Bakes.
It's really hard to imagine a dessert more decadent than six layers of chocolate cake and salted caramel covered with gorgeous swirls of chocolate frosting. All the elements are surprisingly uncomplicated and can be made in stages, and actually, they taste better made a day or two in advance. Start with one and a half cups of Dutch processed cocoa. And it's good to put all of these ingredients right in a sieve. It's three cups of all-purpose flour. And we're just sifting this right into our mixing bowl. Now this is getting a little full, so I will start to sift. You can see that dark cocoa mixing with the flour. Here's the last cup of flour. And we also uh, need three cups of granulated sugar. And this can be sifted also right in these other ingredients. Just go a little at a time. It smells so good. That cocoa powder is so rich. And I put in one cup of sugar. Now we need two more. And a few more dry ingredients, like one tablespoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and make sure your baking powder is fresh, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. So I think I have everything. Now, this is an unusual cake because you don't cream the butter and the sugar and add the eggs to that. You start with the sifted dry ingredients. Add one and a half cups of warm water, four whole eggs, A half a cup plus two tablespoons of safflower oil and one and a half cups of buttermilk. Buttermilk makes such a moist, delicious cake. Oh, and don't forget two teaspoons of best vanilla extract. And this is enough for three nine inch by two inch layer cakes. The pans have been buttered with softened butter, then lined in the bottom with a piece of parchment buttered again, both sides and bottom, and then dusted heavily with more of that Dutch processed cocoa. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So that's one cake. Second cake. And don't waste any of this good batter. It's so pretty. So there we have it. Now bake these cakes in a 350 degree oven until the cakes are set and the toothpick inserted in the center of each comes out clean. That'll take just about 35 minutes. So now we're making the caramel filling. As you can see, the cakes have come out of the oven. They're glistening chocolate brown. To make the caramel, a quarter of a cup of water, a quarter of a cup of light corn syrup, and four whole cups of sugar. I have it on high flame, so I swirl and I tilt. And for any crystals that might be forming around the top of the mixture, use a soft brush and just run a little bit of excess water around to prevent crystals from forming. Another way to prevent crystals is to cover this and let the steam rise and fall back down the sides of the pan. This is gonna take about 14 minutes. So you can see that all the sugar has dissolved. It's darkening in color. Turn off your heat, very important, before you pour in the heavy cream. And you'll see it'll bubble. Stir with the spoon. And be careful, you don't want this to boil over. And cook until it reaches the soft ball, 238 degrees. When it's 238, remove your thermometer. Pour this into a bowl to cool. Now immediately stir in one teaspoon of salt. This will have to cool, and that's gonna take around 15 minutes. So now I'm making the filling, which is this lovely salty caramel filling, incorporating one cup of butter cut into small pieces. And then this will cool further and we'll make the chocolate frosting. And now for the frosting, two sticks of salted butter, a half a cup of confectioner sugar, a pinch of salt, 
And while that's creaming, dissolve a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of cocoa powder. This is the Dutch process. In a quarter of a cup plus two tablespoons of warm water. So you're using cocoa as well as one pound of semi-sweet chocolate melted and cooled. Add the chocolate and then add your cocoa. I'll mix it one last time with the scraper and then let the icing sit for about 30 minutes. So now we have two cakes which are slightly topped, the dome's taken off, and split in half. For those of you who are novices, to split a cake, it might be a little intimidating. So you can measure and you can mark your half of a layer with toothpicks around the perimeter. So this cake is approximately one and a half inches, so three quarters of an inch you can just mark around, and then you can cut with your knife on the top of the toothpicks. That way it'll give you a pretty even layer. So we're going to put approximately three quarters of a cup of this rich, thick caramel right on top of our layers and spread it all over the layer. So now get your next layer back on. More caramel. You get the idea. So this is what the cake looks like all layered. Now this is the serving pedestal. And to keep that clean, I like to insert my little pieces of parchment or wax paper right around the cake like this. Now the pedestal's protected and I am ready to swirl on my chocolate buttercream. This is such a thick and beautiful buttercream. And using an offset spatula, draw some of that frosting down the sides. You want it to go all the way down to the bottom of the supporting cardboard. So if your cake is a little uneven, now's the time with this beautiful frosting to sort of level it off. And now for the crowning glory, this beautiful flaky sea salt. Now pull out your little pieces of parchment. The mess is primarily on the paper and the cake can be chilled or if you can't wait, you can serve it right now. Chocolate and caramel, a match made in heaven. Alfajores are traditional sandwich cookies found throughout South America. They are melt-in-your-mouth shortbread rounds filled with a dulce de leche, a creamy caramel confection made from condensed milk. And I have two cans of condensed milk and I am putting the contents into the top of a double boiler. This is the way you can make your own dulce de leche at home. So here are two cans of condensed milk in the top of a double boiler with a tight fitting lid. This is going to cook for five hours until it turns a nice caramelly brown color. You'll have to continually add boiling water to the bottom of the double boiler. Now for the cookies themselves. In the food processor bowl, four cups of all-purpose flour. And to that, we're going to add a quarter of a cup plus two tablespoons of confectioner's sugar. This is a very simple, delicious shortbread cookie. So just pulse the flour and sugar together and add your butter. One and a half cups of well-chilled butter cut into quarter-inch cubes. And we want to mix the butter totally into the flour and sugar. And now add your water, half a cup. You see how it's coming down off the sides and forming pretty much a ball. Okay. And we're going to make two squares. We'll divide this into half. It's very sticky. And just form this into nice flat circles. Discs, I like to call them. Now this dough has to be chilled for at least an hour before you start to roll out the dough. So here's a round of the chilled dough. Put it on a very lightly floured rolling surface and roll it to a scant quarter of an inch thick. 
and roll in one direction only. So cut your cookies to anywhere from an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters in diameter. This cuts so beautifully, you can see how neat the cookies are, really perfect discs. And cut as many as you can and get them right onto parchment lined baking sheets. And try to minimize the amount of leftover dough. It really helps because you can re-roll this dough, but the cookies are not as nice as the first cut. And these are gonna be sandwich cookies, so you want every disc to match every other disc. There are 24 cookies on this tray. On half of them, sprinkle a little bit of glistening sanding sugar. This will be the top half of the cookie. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. They take 15 minutes to bake. So I am using a tiny two teaspoon scoop to put a modicum amount of the dulce de leche. Look at the color, isn't it great? And it's gotten very thick. Just put that right on the unsugared half of the cookie and press the top on. So these cookies are meant to be eaten immediately, but they're so beautiful and they would be great served with some homemade sorbet or ice cream. They're very tasty and for anyone who loves caramel, a extra delicious cookie. They're very popular. Sometimes a little gilding the lily, as I like to say, is what transforms a good cake into a memorable cake. And that is exactly what Matt Lewis from Baked, which is a bakery, has done with his longtime favorite recipe for buttery pound cake with the addition of a delicious salty caramel glaze. Matt, welcome. Thanks so much. So nice to see you. Good to see you again. You're a busy man, baking away. Yeah, Breads and cakes on. and pies and tarts and all my favorite things. And now a wonderful buttery pound cake, which I love. I love pound cakes very much. And I love the idea of a caramel glaze. Well, it's funny, you know, my Scottish grandmother, and this is, she made this haggis, which I'm not a big haggis fan. Uh, me either. And shortbread. So this is kind of vaguely what I remember. Do you have a shortbread recipe? I do have a shortbread oh, recipe. Oh, next time. Next time. Okay. So we're going to actually make a version of grandma's cake. And what we're going to do is sift together all of our dry ingredients. We okay. have a cup of all-purpose flour. So measure first, then sift? Measure first, then sift, okay. always. And then we did replace a little bit of the all-purpose flour with some cake flour. Oh, so three quarters of a cup of cake flour. And you know, the cake flour will make a much more delicate texture to this cake. So half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And you know, something else my grandmother never sifted. Do you always sift? Well, I usually use a whisk now. Yeah. I like sifting. I think it's, it's, it's all kind the, of the nibbly important. bits out. Yeah. While you're doing that, I'm going to put together our butter and sugar. So what kind of butter do you use? This is just a cultured butter, which just means it has a little more fat and a lot more flavor. It's good. Salty it or unsalty? Unsalted, because okay. we're going to add salt back to the recipe. Okay. And then I'm going to add my sugar. So it's 12 tablespoons of butter, one and what, a quarter one cup? One and a quarter cups of sugar. Okay. And then we're just going to beat this up. You want your butter to be softened. So room temperature to start. Room temperature to start. And then you're going to beat this about four to five minutes until it's really fluffy. Yeah. While I'm doing this, if you want to prepare the pan. So just soften butter? Soften butter, a little parchment. The parchment makes it really easy, obviously, to pull out of the pan. Oh, OK. In a professional bakery, do you butter all the pans or is there something else you use to? We actually butter all of our pans. You do? Yeah, we have to. And I'm gonna add some vanilla, two teaspoons of vanilla, mm -hmm. right into the butter sugar mixture. And just mix that up just for about 15 seconds. So I just laid a piece of parchment right across the bottom of the pan. Perfect. And so you'll be able to pull it out, right? You're gonna pull it right out, 15 minutes. You don't want this thing to cool completely because the actual, the sugars will start to stick to the edge of the pan. Okay. I'm gonna throw some eggs in here. Two eggs and two egg yolks. And you could do this while the mixture is running. And add the other two eggs, one at a time. And then once this combines, we're gonna alternate our dry ingredients with our heavy cream. So this is a really healthy pound cake. But it has cream in it. That's just not <laughs> healthy at all. Now just alternate between the liquid and dry. Okay. Put about one third of the dry ingredients in first. Mix it up just a little bit. And then you could kind of stream in the liquid ingredients, which is just, in this case, the heavy cream. So how many of these cakes do you make at a time? 
we do about 22 to 26 at a time. Wow. Once the eggs go in and the flour goes in, you don't want to overmix it. It will get really tough otherwise. There. And add it to the pan. Oh, I didn't flour this. I should flour it, right? Yeah, let's put a little okay. flour in there just to keep so, it extra from sticking. So just a little bit and bang it around, right? And then so, okay. pound cake is a little persnickety once you put it in the oven. We're gonna put it in here, but you really need to keep an eye on it. It tends to brown a little before the actual whole cake is done, which is totally fine. That means all you have to do is tent it halfway through baking. Okay, with aluminum foil? Just a little bit of aluminum foil. Kind of just even it now, out. Does in this the cake crack on the top like most pound cakes? It gets a nice, it's, a, it's not as obvious crack as some of the pound cakes, but it has a nice kind of golden dome. And then this is gonna bake up for about an hour. What temperature? 350 degrees. So um, the glaze. Let's make a very quick caramel-like glaze. And again, I'm using the cultured butter and heavy cream, half a cup. But the main ingredient in this one is our dark brown sugar, which is half a cup of packed sugar. Oh, it's dark brown. So you wanna just melt the butter at first, just until the butter starts to melt, and then we're going to boil. Now, is that enough holes, or should I have Oh, that's more? perfect. Okay. Matt said to make lots of holes <laughs> because the caramel syrup permeates the whole cake. All right, so you can see my butter's just starting to melt. My sugar's almost completely melted. We're gonna bring this up to a boil, and you want this to boil for about a minute and a half. So there it's all um, boiling. You wouldn't pour it boiling over the cake. Absolutely not. You okay. wanna take this off the heat once it's been boiling for about a minute and a half. You're going to add a little bit of fleur de sel. Three almost quarters of a teaspoon? Three quarters of a teaspoon. Oh, okay. Whisk it together. So while it's still hot, um, add some confectioner sugar? Yeah, let's add a little confectioner sugar. This will give the caramel some body. I always sift confectioner sugar just to get out those lumps. Do you? Always. Oh, perfect. That smells so good, Matt. Oh, so this is perfect. So our caramel's nice and thick. So you don't brush it on? No, you we're gonna it? go pour it right oh, on. Oh, good, okay. And it's easier at home if you wanna pour it into a glass measure cup. Get all of it out if possible. Perfect. And if you wanna do the honors and kind yeah. of glaze our cake. And, you know, don't be afraid, go, go heavy. So do it slowly. You wanna do it slowly so it fills in all of the holes and that caramel's gonna seep into the cake and add a lot of flavor when you cut into it. Yum. And you want this to set for about 15 to 20 minutes before you slice into it. And now sprinkle it while it's still wet? Yes, yeah, sprinkle it while it's still wet. Just a couple pinches. A little goes a long way with the salt. Beautiful. There. Beautiful. Let it cool. This salty caramel glaze is the perfect accompaniment to a buttery pound cake. Thanks for sharing, and I'm sure it will become a favorite of our viewers. Oh, I hope so. Thanks. Thank you. If the combination of chocolate, caramel, and shortbread makes you weak in the knees, you're gonna love these chocolate caramel cookie bars. They're aimed to satisfy the most demanding sweet tooth. They start with a brown sugar shortbread crust, very easy to make. Basically, nine tablespoons of butter. At room temperature, add a quarter of a cup of light brown sugar and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And add one and a half cups of flour. So you see it is a rich shortbread crust. Let that get all mixed up. They're perfect. And now this dough will be pressed right into the bottom of your nine inch baking pan. I've buttered the pan, then lined it with two sheets of crisscrossed parchment, buttered the parchment again and lightly floured it. And these binder clips hold the paper in place. So just put all this dough right in the bottom of the, the pan and press it in an even layer. You can use the back of your knuckles like this, or you can use your fingertips, whatever works best for you. And it's a very thin layer of dough actually, but just enough to give a beautiful base for these cookie bars. So now to flatten, you can use the bottom of a cup measure like this too, just to really even it out. So there, it does uh, really bake nicely and a 350 degree oven bake until lightly browned. That's gonna take about 30 minutes. 
And now for the caramel. One and a half cups of granulated sugar with a quarter of a cup of water. And it's just starting to get a little bit of color. This is the same process that we've used before to make the caramel. You want a nice amber color. So turn off your heat, add your one cup of heavy cream, carefully because it might splatter. And you can stir with a whisk. See how it erupts like a volcano? Be careful. Half a teaspoon of salt and six tablespoons of butter. Stir this all together. Now you can turn the heat back on. You want everything to be dissolved and bringing it back to a boil will ensure that. And as it's boiling, you can now pour it over your beautiful milk chocolate, 10 and a half ounces, finely chopped. The chocolate will melt, and this will be a glossy, beautiful caramel. Whisk until all the chocolate is melted. So now let this cool for at least 15 minutes. You don't want to pour it onto the crust when it's this hot, 15 minutes or so, and you can pour it right over the top. Looks good. Beautiful. And you can just get into each corner. And you really don't want bubbles in your caramel, so you can tap it like that. And after tapping, if you still have just a few bubbles remaining, you can poke them with a toothpick. So chill this at least four hours overnight, even better. So these have chilled overnight. And you can lift them out of the pan. And they release very nicely. And then cut into not very large squares. These are very, very rich. So hear that nice crunch. Good to wipe your knife in between each cut. Just turn and start in the middle. A very modern looking dessert. One last thing before you serve, a little dot of sea salt, flaky sea salt right on top. This is a modern and beautiful dessert to serve the chocolate caramel lovers in your family. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Martha Bakes. I'm back with very funny Seth Myers, and now I'm going to show you how to make a, a scratch off Valentine. Scratch it's not, off Valentine, yes, it's unbelievable. With a message, not a scent. Gotcha. No smell, no smell Valentine. No, 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 no. Okay, because that's not fun. No. So, uh, so you just need a few household items like freezer paper. Nothing here is in my household. I'm just gonna jump out. Packing tape? Packing tape, of course, right. I remember exactly where it is, great. Really, do you no, think No, I don't so? have any of this stuff, but go ahead. Okay, so, and some uh, card stock. Decorative right, card, card stock. stock. And a this, we all have heart these. punch, <laughs> yes, a heart punch, The heart right? punch, the household heart punch. Yes. Okay, so now uh, you take your freezer paper, shiny side up, okay. and you apply strips of packing tape. Great. Okay, this is gonna make the sticker part of your Valentine. Okay, that okay. makes sense. Okay, okay. then All right. then you um, paint this with? with a mixture of metallic paint. Ooh. And this is craft paint, which you can get at the local craft store. Great. Okay, and oh, it's fantastic paint. Just talk Just to paint. Jack at my local craft store. That's right. <laughs> you have some good craft stores in your neighborhood. I do. Yes. So, and oh, by the way, this is mixed with two parts metallic paint and one part liquid dish soap. Okay. Now, how anybody figured out that, I will never know. Uh, the paint. Mayans figured it out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they had liquid gold. Yeah. Okay, so just make sure you completely cover that tape. Then you cut out those strips, and here we have them already cut out. Okay, great. Now, you this want to- This is the to... part I love about being here. Yes. <laughs> you the, do that, the and the then we've already done it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, to use the heart, because we don't want it to stick on the sticky right. tape and everything, just put a little scrap paper over. Okay. Were you prompted? You seem to know what you're no, doing. No, I'm, I'm just, okay. I'm just wa doing what you're doing. Okay, so now stick this in okay. like that, and then pop out a heart. Okay. Now put a little sticky here and a little sticky here underneath a slit. You have a slit. 
That's okay. for the penny. Now, what's the penny for? Uh, th the penny is to cross the river Styx. Okay. <laughs> that's to actually scratch. That's, oh, right. It's and, to scratch out. And if you put this little bit of tape here, it'll prevent the penny from slipping down. Okay? Okay. So then we have our card, and this is a template which you can get online at MarthaStewart.com. Gotcha, great. That you have a computer at home, right? I do, And a I printer, do. and a printer? Uh, yes. Okay, he has to think. <laughs> and now you take your double stick tape, which you have by your telephone. Yep. At home. Right, of course. Because I still have a telephone. <laughs> <laughs> so I still have an old telephone. No, do you have a telephone in your apartment? I don't. No, who has I a don't. telephone anymore? Gosh. Wait, what like, am I doing, where is this going? Oh, no, that's, no. that's Yeah, that's that, you have to put your tape on there, so you can stick that on to the side opposite the penny. Yeah. My tape was my tape was too long. I eyeballed okay. it wrong. So you stick this on your beautiful. Card. Okay, this is the part where I kind of feel like I fall behind and get nervous, and then okay. I get nervous. Hold on. Okay, great. That's yours. Okay. Yes. No, no. What are you doing? What am I doing? <laughs> I'm panicking. <laughs> oh, this oh, is, yours no, is was, already no, done. This is the, oh, here, here. The, right. here, this goes. This goes here. Here. Yours is horizontal. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay. okay. There. <laughs> well, that one's done already. Yeah, this is the one I, okay. I they that had you me did fill for this me. Out but now, wait a minute. Put your now peel off the backing of your little hearts. Yeah. See, that's this. That's you've made your own sticky paper. Isn't that clever? It is. It is clever. And put this <laughs> over this. It'd be less clever if I hadn't been talked through it at every turn. And then, and then, what you're going to do is scratch. This is what you scratch. You scratch this painty, soapy stuff off. The message. This one says, "Be mine, true love, hugs." Boring. Yeah, those are boring. I wrote some messages for you on mine. Okay, Seth. great. This is for you. Okay, and this is for you. I wrote something. <gasps> Thank on you. And then you take your penny out of the back. See? Okay. And you scratch. I already lost my penny. You do? <laughs> okay, I got it. I stole you it. You got it. Okay. Right. So Seth wrote me a message. I, that's actually the one I'm going to give Alexi. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. I'm. Let's see what you're gonna give. Having. There you go. Having an affair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with Martha. Yeah. Oh. That'd be the right way. I feel like she'd be happy. It's a thoughtful way to tell it. <laughs>